The embargo has lifted. It is time to show off the Chaos Dwarves in all of their glory. In this video today, I'm going to go through the entire Chaos Dwarf roster, show off their unit cards, talk very briefly about each one as there is a lot of units to go through, and then we'll close the video out talking about the Regiments of Renown for the Chaos Dwarfs. And lastly, I'm just going to kind of show you guys what Tsar Nagran looks like on the actual battlefield here so this is not actually going to be a full-on battle it's mainly me just kind of showing off the unit cards um, kind of talking about some stuff stuff like that and then just quickly showing this off so if you don't want to actually see Zar Nagran in the flesh outside of what i'm showing you right now you can just go ahead and skip that i'll be at the very 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 end and i'll just kind of talk while i'm doing it and kind of give you my thoughts about the army and what have you but let's dive here in on the legendary lords we're going to go through them first followed by the heroes infantry so on and so have you Let's just dive on in. And also, 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 if you have not yet purchased the DLC, you can use my uh, Creative Assembly affiliate link, in which case it will give you 10% off the DLC. That's going to be live for a week after the game comes out. So if you want to wait until after you see it, get some reviews in your system before you decide to do that, please, by all means, go ahead and do so. But that link goes a long way to helping to support the channel. Also, please do check me out on Twitch, where I will be streaming this tomorrow. Wait, no. When this goes live, I'll be streaming it today. So jump on over to Twitch, and I'll be doing some battles um, of this uh, actual uh, DLC. We'll be showing off the Chaos Dwarfs. We'll be doing some battles against the AI, and I'll be doing a giveaway of the DLC probably next week sometime. But go ahead and head over to the Twitch linked in my description and pinned comment. Now, let's get started here on the Chaos Dwarf roster. And our first guy to take a look at is the man in the high chair himself in the baby carrier is Astrakoth Iron Hand. Let's take a look at this guy. So we have seen his stats really before. Um, so nothing new there. Um, really what we're going to do is make sure that this unit card stays. There's a weird little bug here. There we go. Now we've seen, like I said, his stats. So we're not going to go through those as much. But again, remember, it is both flaming attacks, AP damage, and magic attacks coming out of this guy with 60 melee attack and 480 weapon strength. For those wondering what that AP spread looks like, it's 310 AP damage with 130 armor. So he has an ability called the Black Hammer of Hashet, which is going to increase weapon damage and AP damage coming out of him. Um, I apologize if I press start battle, um, this thing will end midway through this recording, so I guess just kind of deal with the, the annoying start battle thing at the top. Uh, again, I do apologize. But this is 32 seconds, and it also makes it so that things are going to be able to take more fire damage, and they are going to also have leadership issues because they're now flammable. Now his customs kit is a uh, three-spell lore of fire and three spell lore of hashet burning wrath we saw from the uh campaign description it basically lobs a big ball of fire and destroys things 500 damage with a really good explosive um also we get ash storm for speed reduction and also weakness to fire damage plus 20 percent that is a real nice ability here it is not a wind spell it's a hex in an area so you'll just be dropping this and getting affecting all enemies in range without even having to overcast it that's just the standard template right i click it it goes i, I get the area i don't have to like uh, overcast to get an area or whatever it is then hellhammer is a wind spell that does 48 damage 50 percent of it being ap but also flaming and magic attacks you can kind of um amp up that uh that that both magic and fire damage for his passive abilities he gets the kind of usual usual kit we would expect for a single entity, uh, immune to psychology, wall breaker, but here's how contempt works. So witnessing other friendly units route will only affect this unit's leadership if they also have the contempt attribute. So if I take a look at any of my hobgoblins who do not have contempt, if they flee and I have contempt, I don't care. But all the dwarf warriors, for example, if they flee, they have contempt and I have contempt. So I care. It counts as a penalty against my leadership. For uh, his abilities, we also get Killing Fire. This is pretty sick looking. Um, this is the lore attribute for the lore of Hashet, which does a damage of 15 to 30 DPS for 5 seconds. Anytime you cast a spell in a 55 meter radius, not an entire map wide buff. Also, we're going to see Mechanical Overdrive, which is a uh, passive ability him for him, right? So this is going to increase his. This is not on an area around him, but it increases his base weapon damage and melee attack up to 15 percent and up to eight melee attack for each kill made by the unit so stacking that up 
Lastly, here we get Stone Mantle, which gives him a ward save that increases every time he takes damage. So his speed slows down to a max of 10%, but he'll get 30% physical resistance. So as Astragoth gets beaten up, He'll move slower, sure, but he'll take 30% less damage by virtue of having that 30% physical, well, less physical resistance, or less physical damage, right? Um, so he can really, really, really tank quite a bit of damage here, which is nice in like probably the earlier portions of your campaign as, as you deal with him. 15% melee uh, missile resistance and then 35% uh, fire resistance on him. But that is our first legendary lord. We're going to go through all the legendary lords next. So let's talk about the uh, next two on the list. Next up is the rad ass Trazoetheashen on Cinderbreath. Look at them. Look at how sick. Look, I didn't even notice he had a hobgoblin or a little goblin attached to his his little thing there. Oh man, I thought that was just a skull. Holy crap! But I just wanted to show you guys too what Cinderbreath looks like compared to a Bale Taurus. Um, very very similar, of course, but he has way more armor on him. He looks absolutely awesome. Different idle animations too. But I just kind of wanted to show this off real quick before we jump into Drazoa's abilities. So, and then there's your, just your kind of typical Bale. You're, you're, you're boring Bale Taurus, right? Be gone, Bale Taurus. So, let's take a look at this guy. Now, remember, we have seen a lot of these stats already uh, from all the videos. But 80 armor, 64 melee attack that is flaming. But let's take a look at his AP. 425 AP damage coming out of him with 8,664 health. Let's look to now his abilities. So abilities, Flaming Breath, that's the one that we get from the Bale Taurus. We've already seen this. But he has the Graven Scepter, one of his items. Now this is going to imbue him with magical attacks. But also it's going to give him AP, or, uh, AP and weapon damage plus 25% and melee attack plus 24. That puts his melee attack extremely high, right? At to 88. That is nice and juicy. Now for his spells... Oh, uh, keep in mind that's 24 second duration with 120 second cooldown. For spells, we get the entire lore of Hashit. Um, if you guys want, I will do a video specifically showing off the lore of Hashit and its spells. I might just do it anyway. But Burning Wrath, we've seen. Ash Storm and Hellstammer Hammer, we've seen. But Dark Subjugation is a leadership reduction, a melee defense reduction for uh, 17 seconds. So it only affects one enemy. Now, I can't. I think if I press this button, and we go to spells, uh, where is it? Ah, okay. So even if, even if I overcast it, it still is only for one enemy. You know, sometimes there's a spell that you can overcast and allows you to cast in an area, but that is that little guy right there. Curse of Hashit over here is going to be a direct damage spell. This is the one that we've seen as well, where a big bull head floats over them and just does damage, kind of like a soul leech. And then we get Flames of Asgore, which is a bombardment spell, which is going to be doing a significant amount of damage, but also has ranged, or also has an explosive damage profile attached to it. That is a heavy AP profile. It causes both magic and flaming attacks as well with a medium strike area. So that is the entire lore of Hashit now. Um, for our passive abilities, Siege Attacker, which is probably coming more from the actual Bale Taurus than from him, causes fear, causes terror, again from the Bale Taurus, immune to psychology. Um, keep in mind too that these stats are obviously influenced by him being on the Bale Taurus. I totally, I apologize for that. I should probably, I should probably not show off the him on the mount, but Dude, look at Cinderbreath. How could I not do that? Blazing Body is an attribute of the actual um, Bale Taurus as well. This is going to give melee damage reflection and physical resistance as he is engaged in combat. I mean, dude, that is the, the mechanics for all those Chaos Dwarf is just so goddamn cool. Then Dark Renown coming out from uh, Drazoeth himself. It's going to increase the melee attack 35 meters around him if the unit has Contempt. So basically, all of your mainstay units. None of the Hobgoblins are going to get this in any way, shape, or form. But all the Bull Centaurs, all of your Chaos Dwarf Warriors, all of your Infernal Guard, your Iron Sworn, they're all going to benefit from Dark Renown, as well as your War Machines. Infernal Engineer is a passive ability here that's going to help with missile resistance for himself, but also allies get a reload skill bonus. So this is probably the first time we've seen this kind of self and ally um, attribute here, which is pretty nifty. So enabled if grounded, friendly war machines or artillery are in range. So if they're not in range, this doesn't kick off. Um, at least I think. Affects units if missile attack possible. Affects units allies in in range. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of criteria. So he has to be on the ground. It seems like, and he has to be next to you. You know what? <laughs> Watch this. 
How does it work now, huh? In front, so now that's active for him, giving him that 15% um, missile resistance. He gets the Hell Shard Amulet, which helps with oof, melee damage reflection plus 20 and damage resistance plus 10%, only enabled if in melee. I like this this little um, context clip. Uh, 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 <laughs> did I say what I thought I said? Context clue. Enabled if in melee, and it's in red, telling me that it's not enabled right now. I actually really, really like that. Also, the Demon Spike Crucible, his other... Um, item. This is going to give him spell mastery up to 20% and every time each a kill is made by the unit. So dude, there's a lot of damage uh, or damage taken or kills made effects on a lot of these legendary lords, which I actually really, really like. Um, is that missile resistance reflected from his Dark Renown? Let's take a look. It says 25%. Okay, so yeah, it, it does not show it. So 25% with 35% uh, fire resist. And that 25% missile resist would go up if he had Dark Renown active. Or, I'm sorry, Infernal Engineer active. So that is our Drazoeth. Let's take a look at Zatan the Black now. Last and certainly not least, like I said, is Zatan the Black. Now, I decided to take him off his mount this time so we can get an idea of... Look at that little tiny axe! Oh, little puppy! Uh, so we can get an idea of what his stats are actually like. Um, I did put up the stats for Drazoeth off of his mount so you guys can see that. But let's take a look here. So actually, this thing's kind of, like I said, it's kind of weirdly bugged. So I have to click off of him, click on him, and then do that. So we get his armor value at 125 to be expected because he is a big burly dwarf. Um, that looks to me like a gambeson, but I'm not the one to split hairs here. 62 melee attack and 55 melee defense with 460 weapon strength. Um, not an actual AP damage profile, which just simply means that the AP damage exceeds the base weapon damage, but he still does have 180 AP. Don't think he, that he doesn't. And of course, remember, he can be on a um, great Taurus as well as a Lamasu. So he has plenty of options to do extreme amounts of damage. Now for his abilities, he gets two. Sadistic Stare here, um, which is or Snare, which is basically his lockdown, minus 24 melee defense, and they cannot move for 33 seconds. Affects enemies in range, max one. I'll start the battle here just to kind of take a look at what that looks like after we finish his little uh, uh, dialogue portion, or me talking. And then he has the Armor of Gazrak. Now this is a damage resistance up to 30% effect intensity increases as a unit takes damage again I, I'm just really liking those mechanics because it's a oh my god dude do you need a lozenge oh my god I'm stepping back from you um good god uh but uh I like that these mechanics are not just flat mechanics it's not just simply hey yeah here it is enjoy it no it, it he has to be in battle or he has to take damage he has to cast spells he has to do this or that i think it makes for a more dynamic play style with the character he also has expert charge defense which is lovely to see contempt boundless cruelty oh that is that is blinding oof my boundless cruelty that's a little bit better um which is going to give leadership minus eight again when with each enemy entity in range so either the full unit or a single entity here um and that increases up to a minus eight now i'm not sure if that is a it, it seems percentage based so i'm not sure if it's like a you know eight entities in here or what the max is but of course it will go up to eight uh, the Obsidian Axe is his augmentation ability as well. Um, this will increase his AP and melee attack with each kill made by the unit. And then the Chaos Rune Shield is immune to contact effects for 35 meters radius around him. This is going to be great when he is on a flying mount helping to negate those contact effects. Really, 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 really stoked in this character. I mean, honestly, Zatanna is going to be the one that I'm going to be playing first on the channel. So if you want to see what that looks like uh, when we jump into uh, the actual uh, Let's Plays and Early Access, that, that'll be on Twitch when we do it. Um, I will be, of course, doing my best to worst of these three lords uh, that my typical kind of uh, episodic uh, breakdown of the Immortal Empires campaigns. And I also will be doing an individual video for each one just to give you an idea of what their campaign plays out like without any spoilers so if you are wondering it'll just be right on turn one we'll be looking at it right from that uh, initial starting point but let me press start battle here and just take a look at this so okay so this is actually a you have to click on the actual enemy i just was wondering if this was um like a net or an actual effigy to get and it is more like effigy to get which i believe actually too effigy to get is a um uh, you can only target a um lord or hero and let me just kind of where are you big boy 
and I'm sure someone else knows this already, but I am not a smart man. F you to get okay, so I, I I thought it was like that, but it's not. Um, but it is obviously doing damage too, so you don't get the actual uh, melee defense. That's the big difference there as well. So 13 seconds versus the 33, um, but this has some DD as well. So let's now jump into our generic lord with the overseer before going into the heroes and the rest of the, the army. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to do this next portion right here in the actual army select screen because we've already seen them in the actual campaign map, and this way we can kind of get a real quick idea of what their costs are and everything. If you are curious about that so for the overseer we have a character that has got 120 armor We're looking at 55 and 55 on both melee attack and defense and weapon strength here is 260 with 170 ap so very similar to zaton the black um, but now his abilities we're going to see foe seeker standard die and then the black gem of gnar like absolutely gnarly brother melee attack minus 100 percent a unit is invulnerable to damage so he can't really hit things well, and this is for him, of course. It triggers on him. He can't hit things at all, but he is invulnerable to damage in that time. And it lasts for 13 seconds, a great way to mitigate damage. And then for his passives, there's nothing special there. Also for his mounts, he gets both the Great Taurus and then the Lamasu. For our caster, and take a look at this little ditty coming your way. Look at this. Um, I don't... I, I'm pretty sure this is not in the game. I think this is only from 3.0. But now, spell lore is no longer... I don't have five or five different Sorcerer Prophets of Death. Same thing here with my Demon Smiths. I have all of them truncated down into one, and I can simply select the spell lore. I absolutely love that improvement. It's coming with 3.0. It applies to every single faction in the game. So absolutely love that. Now, he gets the Infernal Engineer ability that you saw with um, Drazoeth. Because, again, he is a Sorcerer Prophet. And then his actual stat line is 120 armor, 44 melee attack. That is uh, magical. With weapon strength 330. Uh, you're also going to see that he has a pistol, of course. So that pistol is going to be doing... Um, a nice bit of damage here, as you can see. 64 AP with an explosive attribute attached to it as well. 110 range, 45 flaming ammo. That also is, well, flammable. So it's going to weakness to fire damage. You know what? This whole time I've been talking about flammable as it reduces leadership. I, for some reason, thought it did. But it only does weakness to fire damage, I guess. So I apologize for being wrong there a couple times. Um, for those wanting to know what his weapon strength looks like, 230 base with 100 AP. Um... I, was, I just quickly checked through the lore to see if that changed, if he had a uh, pistol or not, but it does not. For his two items, the Chalice of Blood and Darkness, which was going to replenish the hit points of combatants, of course. Now, this is um, enemy spell cast within range. Oh, interesting. That's pretty wild. Range 35 meters, duration 13 seconds, with a cooldown of 90 seconds. And then the Vial of Hashut, which is right in from the Tamarcon book here. Armor minus 40 and weakness to fire damage plus 60%. Range 50 meters, duration 55 seconds. That's a pretty long cast on the Vial of Hashet here. And it is a single hex, not a hex area. So you're just going to cast this on something, then probably just, you know, Flames of Asgore or going Burning Wrath or whatever it is you're going to try to, like, kind of one-two punch with that. That's going to be pretty nice with both the lower fire and Hashet. But you can also just simply use this and take advantage of anything in the roster that does flaming damage. Hint, it's like all of it. For our mounts, we also get the Great Taurus, Lamasu, and then the Bale Taurus. So those are our generic lords. Let's now go over to the heroes on the battlefield. Here are our three heroes for the Chaos Dwarfs. Now, we've seen these guys in portions of the trailers and whatnot, but let's kind of go through them here. Let's start off, though, with the Infernal Castellian, a very different and unique character. Okay, he's got a Fire Glaive that he's taken advantage of, but he's got some AP and bonus versus large, as to be expected with the Fire Glaive. That's 250 AP damage coming out of it, only a, a measly bonus versus large of 5. Uh, keeping in mind, too, this is what his damage profile looks like for his ranged attack. It is a spicy, spicy little sausage. 45 melee attack and 42 defense with 120 army coming out, armor coming out of this bad boy. Flaming attacks as well, to be noted. Flaming attacks and AP everywhere. So he gets Deadly Onslaught, which is a charge bonus and base weapon damage. I'm not sure how great that's going to be for him. But also, also Breath of Hatred. <laughs> so imbues Flaming Attacks and Sundered Armor. Melee Attack plus 24 affects allies in a 35 meter radius around him for 31 seconds. Nice and spicy. His passive abilities here, Expert Charge Defense, Charge Reflection, uh, Contempt, Life, Bane, Blade. So regeneration, so he heals whenever he's in, da in um, combat at 0.10%. Also, dig in is a really cool ability here. And 
If you're wondering if the dwarfs got any of this stuff, they didn't. And I, I can, we can check real quick. I can show it to you, but after this section, but they did not get anything cool like this. Digging, 25 seconds, entrenched. Bonus versus bonus to range, bonus to missile resistance, and expert charge defense. Like, holy crap. That is sick. And this applies to some other uh, of the range units in the, in the army as well. So absolutely sick for this guy. Moving over here to our caster. Now, we do have the lore of fire, death, hatchet, and metal coming to the Chaos Dwarfs. The Demon Smith is just simply your hero version of that all. Now, they have a spell root. There we go. A spell rot scepter, but let's take a look at his stats first. Um, we're going to also see he's got a pistol, so very, very similar to our um, our sorcerer prophet, but again, just that hero version thus of uh, magic attacks and flaming attacks as well. Spell rot scepter here is going to decrease cooldown for 30 seconds. He's got the reforge ability, which is a healing ability for anything with the hell forged attribute, which is pretty much your entire war machines and your Kadai. I don't know if I, don't, I know the Destroyer has one. I don't know if the Fireborn have one, but all your Kadai, uh, or I'm sorry, all your War Machines have the Hellforged attribute. And the only thing the Hellforged attribute does is just mark something as healable, just like it does for the Tomb Kings, right? Oh, this is a construct. There's the there's the icon. I can heal it using my Demon Smith. So a very similar mechanic to what we get with the Tomb Kings. Then the Demon Flask of Ashak here is a Vortex that does 4 DPS, also with a contact effect that does... Minus 16 melee attack. I don't know what the name of that that contact effect is. It doesn't show me. It just says 10 seconds, minus 16 melee attack. Um, but this guy can be mounted. The Infernal Castellian cannot. So he can actually be on um, Alamasu and one of the Tarai. I, I don't remember if it's the Bale or the, or, the, or the Great Taurus, but he can be on one or the other. I'm pretty sure it's the Bale Taurus. And then he gets the spells that he would have, immune to psych, life leeching, and then infernal engineer. So that missile resistance and that reload skill. But that is our lovely demon uh, smith sorcerer. Then we have the bull center, centaur. Now that we have seen this guy. Oh, you know what I forgot to put over here? Ba boom, <laughs> The bull centaur. So the bull centaur we've seen. Uh, but he does have, keep in mind, he's shielded. Oh, no, whoops. I was, like, he, I was like, I don't remember him being shielded when I first looked at these stat line. Uh, 70 armor here with 70 speed on this guy. So he is built to move. 48 melee attack and 42 melee defense with, of course, that attributes, or I'm sorry, that weapon damage profile that we've seen before. But now we see it's 320 AP with 30 bonus versus large. And a nice 50 charge bonus. For his abilities, Foe Seeker, Heroic Killing Blow. He has the Dark Mace, which is a hex in an area, giving armor minus 30, or... Uh, penalizing armor minus 30 and then vigor per second increased by one percent so it's going to slow things down for you well it's going to increase their vigor it's going to tire them out at a 35 meter radius around him then for his passives he gets the talisman of obsidian here which is going to negate magical weapons within the effect area of 35 meters that is so sick like i love that that exists in this game also he has guardian he is our he is our guardian hero now onto Gordas. So Gordas can be on foot or on a giant wolf here, as you can see. Here is Gordas' stats. Now he is the one with the bronze shield. Now these stats are again, again a little skewed because he's on a um, <laughs> said horseback. He's on he's he's barebacking on a wolf, um, but still, uh, here is our backstabber boy. Um, not a lot, a lot of AP coming out of him. But again, that could be because he's on his wolf. I apologize for that. 50 and 58, 92 speed, but he's on wolf too, so he's quite quick. Um, I think that matches up with the other guys, right? Yeah, they're 92 as well. So matching that that uh, actual uh, speed profile. But slippery and then crooked, crooked dice here. So grants one of the listed effects at random. Rolled one to two, 30 seconds. Rolled three to four. Uh, I'm sorry. Rolled one to two, armor plus 60. Three to four is armor or physical resistance plus 40 percent and then damage resistance plus 40 percent on five or six that is such a sick mechanic like i absolutely love that they brought literal dice rolling into the game in a and not just a figurative behind the scenes kind of way i do love that the dagger of malice uh does he actually have it on his person um but imbues poison and then base weapon damage plus 100 percent and then a 40 plus melee attack so it does give him a very punchy assassin type role within the army allowing him to really do some uh, kind of bursty damage to at least slow things down and to get some damage in while you kind of try to finish them off. First passive abilities, he gets malign authority, leadership plus eight, filling units with, with contempt in range. So at least you do get contempt bonuses because I believe the hobgoblins have this as well. Yes, they do. Um, wounds, of course, and then lucky get. 
So here's his passive ability. Feel lucky, five seconds. Healing, 30 seconds. So heal per second plus 0.40%, but only happens when he's less than 25% health. Burst of life-saving hit points. So you can see that's going to give him a little bit of uh, a stability because he's, of course, not the tankiest of boys, but nonetheless, he can do some pretty fun things on the battlefield. So those are our heroes for the Chaos Dwarfs. Let's now get into the rest of the military. Starting us off is the Dwarf Warriors. I should have started with the Laborers, but I wanted to go into these guys first, because look at those hats. That's a lot of hats. That's a lot of Chaos Dwarf Warriors, and they're looking specie, spicy, like the sausage. So taking a look at them real quick, we've seen this stat profile plenty of times, but just to kind of quickly show it off, 85 armor coming out of them with silver shields on just the Dwarf Warrior counterpart, with 30 and 44 melee attack and defense respectively. 34 weapon strength on them, just to kind of show you what the base warriors look like, 9 AP damage with them, and we now know that they've got uh, what, what Contempt does now, and we have the charge defense versus large. With the Great Warriors, it's just a similar profile, right? But you can see that that AP damage has been really swapped out. 9 base, 27 AP. And you can see, too, that you're looking at a very similar profile, just a little bit less weapon strength. And, of course, you're losing out on some... Um, I'm sorry, a little bit more weapon strength, but you're losing out on some melee defense, as to be expected when you're not looking at a great weapon variant. Now, our last option here, our last uh, unit for the Chaos Dwarf Warriors is the Blunderbuss. So, as to be expected to, just like the dwarf, the, the, the actual dwarf, their uncorrupted cousins, where the quarrelers and whatnot are actual combatants, it's the same thing here with the uh, Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses. They are still decent melee combatants. It's really only a reduction now of two. Uh, well, I guess it's probably better to compare the Great Warriors. Yeah, it's they lose two attack and melee defense, so still staying hanging out at 28 and 32. Uh, but here is the actual breakdown of their blunderbusses. 13 AP damage coming to them with 5 base damage, a range of 90 and ammunition being at um, uh, 30 there. So those are your Chaos Dwarf Warriors. Let's move now into the Laborers. Another unit we've seen plenty of, but just to quickly show them off and for the sake of continuity in a in a roster reveal video. Now, they uh, the Goblin Laborers have Malign Authority, which is going to give them that leadership bonus if they're in um, range of something with Contempt. The Orc Laborers also benefit from this. So Goblin Laborers, though, are basically just your little kind of stabby meat shield things here. They still have... Um, even though they've got spears, they are not counted as a bonus versus large unit. So just to kind of keep that in mind here, uh, just... Just chaff unit here, right? 12 and 16 melee attack and defense. Not much coming out of these bad boys. They're just there to absorb shots. Then you also get your orc laborers, which have great weapons as far as uh, the set profile is concerned with six base, 18 AP damage. A um, little bit stockier, 22 melee attack and 12 melee defense. But again, they're not going to be doing anything crazy. They're just there to absorb those shots for you. Just wanted to show them up before we move into the hobgoblins. I'm not going to lie to you. Hobgoblins and Night Goblins both might be my favorite kind of like iconic unit for Warhammer. Like it's one that they use is like the, that little face with the really like sharp teeth. It's in it's a lot of the older editions. It's such a really cool look. And to see these guys kind of brought to life is really sick here. So the Hobgoblin Cutthroats, which I don't think we've actually seen in any of the playthroughs, from their stat cards at least. Um, but looking at 25 armor with bronze shields, 28 melee attack and defense. These are your tier 1 better troops and your laborers, right? Leadership, though, is still pretty low at 45, so keep that in mind. They do get backstabbers as an ability. Now, the way that this worked in tabletop was it would give you an ability to basically pursue things a little bit easier. This gives base and, or, I'm sorry, missile and weapon base damage increased by 30% as long as their hit points are above 50%. Now, it's not going to be reflected in this profile until I press start battle. But otherwise, this weapon strength would go up by 14, which is a pretty substantial increase. Now, keep in mind, too, this is actually... It would not go up by 14. It would go up by, like, 10.5 because it only increases the base weapon damage, not the overall damage. And that weapon strength value is always the two numbers put together. So I apologize for that, uh, that error on my part. But then we also get these sneaky gets, which I do believe we've actually seen. Remember, they do have a precursor shot to ammunition. They can throw these little... Uh, Poison Daggers, which is going to be 24 uh, Missile Strength on them. But again, the big point here is to do that uh, actual poison. So they can fire whilst moving, which is sick. And they have Stock and Vanguard Deployment, as well as that Backstabber's ability, which is going to be really nice. Because you're going to increase the Weapon Strength on this. Um, and they also get a 
uh, bonus versus infantry of seven, which is uh, great for just a nice little tier, tier one chaff unit that is in stock. You can get these guys in the back line, have a little bit of harassment going on with them. That is lots of fun all the way around. Then lastly, we get the Hobgoblin Archers, which do not have stock. I was hoping that they would, but they don't. But they shoot fire ammo. That is sick. So just your base tier one archers shoot fire ammo. That's going to be really, really nice for a lot of different situations, in which case just kind of getting those fire shots on is going to be lovely. Um, so I, I'm really stoked to kind of use these guys in prolonged combat. 130 range on them. Not a lot of range damage. But I mean, if you it, what are they called? Ungor Raiders are a really good example of they're not really high damage but there's such a huge volume of shots that they still can do quite a bit these two guys do have 140 120 and then 90 men in the unit so just kind of keep all those things in mind as you're taking a look at these things i'm putting them all into consideration let's move now into some of the more heavier scarier infantry for the cast dwarfs it is infernal guard time and they look crispy and good. I am so... Guys, like the whole entire roster, I am just jazz hands on. And I'm a big high elf player, so you know that's a big step for me. So Infernal Guard here come out with 100 girthy armor. Now, um, this is important to take a look at. Since we talked a lot about this in the previous video where we looked at Zatan the Black, we saw the Infernal Guard and we saw the Infernal Iron Sworn. These are raw stats, right? Nothing is influencing this from campaign mechanics. And when we talk about the Infernal Iron Sworn, I'll talk about how they're still stupid strong by comparison to Iron Breakers. So 100 armor coming out of this, 26 speed, 32 melee attack, 30, 56 melee defense. And these aren't even the Iron Sworn. So still looking great. They also get charge defense versus large, um, and they can hide in forest because they're small, tiny dwarves. Um, those are our Infernal Guard. 100 men in the unit, too, to keep in mind. Now we get the Great Weapon variant. Oh, just to just to kind of show this off, because I've done it for everyone else. 11 base, 11 uh, armor piercing with 31 base. And then for the Great Weapons here, we are looking at 11 base with 33 AP. Still, they have 46 melee defense. That is pretty substantial. Again, just to kind of give you a juxtaposition. Um, the Dwarfs, if we go, let's just go to like a long beard with a Great Weapon. I mean, they've got 38 melee defense, so I guess it's not that far. I mean, no, it is. It is, I was right. 38 melee defense compared to the 46... <clears throat> of the Infernal Guard. Keep in mind, yes, of course, this is a tier two unit, <clears throat> but we'll even look at the Hammerers, which are a tier three unit. That's 46 melee attack and 38 melee defense versus the 32 melee attack of the Infernal Guard, but 46 melee defense. So it's kind of like you're swapping those two. You basically kind of have inverse Hammerers. Hammerers are a little bit more damage profile versus the Infernal Guard are a little bit more defensive. Um, and then you also get the fact that they've got charge defense. But I mean, that's neither here nor there. Give hammerers charge defense. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Now, we look at the fire glaives. Now, this is your next upgraded uh, ranged attack unit for the Chaos Dwarfs. 145 on their range. 33 AP damage coming out of them with 24 of that being raw AP. 6 of it being base. Then, of course, they do have glaives. So, they get that 5 bonus versus large. So, 25 AP damage coming out of that too. With 80 in the unit. So, keep in mind that you do drop 20 just using the... Um, the actual missile infantry unit for the Infernal Guard, but it's still quite a different uh, unit. But everything is flaming when their their melee attack and their ammunition is concerned, because look at those things. I mean, why wouldn't it be flaming? The base two guys do not have flaming attacks, just as a kind of just to kind of compare that. And they still do have a really good line here: thirty attack and forty-two melee defense. So they're a really a great unit, a great um, gunpowder unit in that kind of upper. It's like an upper mid tier, right? Like. It's not mid-tier like the Chaos Warriors are, but it's not that top tier like the Iron Sworn are. It's like that right in between that's probably going to be like a tier 4 building or whatever it is. But that's your Infernal Guard. Let's move over to the Iron Sworn and have a quick conversation about that before jumping into some other units. Probably one of the coolest single units in the whole entire army is the Iron Sworn. Like, these are just some of the coolest looking models I've seen. And even though they're no taller than a bar stool, they look great. Let's take a look at that stat line. So in the Zatan the Black um, campaign video, we saw 152 armor. That's now brought down to a realistic 125 without any kind of campaign buffs. But they're still jacked. 42 melee attack and 64 melee defense with flaming and magic attacks. And get this, they get satchels just like Iron Breakers do that do AP damage. These things are tanks. I threw them in a 1v1. Iron Sworn versus Iron Breakers, they got two satchels, both their satchels off, 
and killed the Iron Breakers down to a half, if not just slightly below. The Iron Breakers were only able to get one satchel charge off, and it got 25% of these guys, but they didn't lose any models. Like, these guys are so tanky. Even just taking a look real quick at what that looks like. Um, let's get that thing to stay up there, please. Well, I gotta press this, press this, press this, click that, click that, click this. Okay. Now we can go to dwarfs. Now on the left side we have the uh, the iron sworn, right? Let's look at the iron breakers. So armor's the same, leadership's the same, speed's the same. Melee attack, 42 versus 34. Melee defense, 64 versus 66. So we were not looking at the uh, the inflated portion of the campaign. These guys do come a little bit more in line with the iron breakers, but still only two difference. Their weapon strength, though, is 42 versus the 32 of the Iron Breakers. Charge bonus is better, but who cares? But look at that ammunition change, right? They get 10 more range on the Iron Breakers, and they get they do less raw damage, but the Iron Breakers get no AP uh, bonus here. So it's like, damn, they really kind of lose out by comparison to the Iron Breakers when it comes to just that raw damage potential from their satchel charges, the raw damage potential from their actual weapon strength, which is both magic and flaming that the Iron Breakers do not get. At least give the, the satchel charges flaming. It's an explosive satchel charge. Why wouldn't it be flaming? So I, I definitely think the Iron Breakers and the Hammerers, and it, like I've said so many times now in so many videos, this makes the Dwarfs feel so weak by comparison when you just look at like a one-to-one -one of each of their units across the board here. So I do think that they need a little bit of a sprucing up. Just wanted to make that point here before we jump into more portions of the Chaos Dwarfs. Um, Magical Axe Infantry, so sick. Let's proceed. It is Bull Centaur time. Let's have a look at the cavalry units for um, the Chaos Dwarf. So the Bull Centaur renders are ones that we've already seen before as well, but we're going to have 50 armor with a nice good silver shield. That's 62 speed on them with 114 AP damage, 80 of it being actual AP, 34 being base. Um, for their actual abilities, uh, also 36 attack and 48 defense on them. Uh, for the actual abilities, nothing crazy here, just Siege Attacker, Causing Fear, all those fun things. Scaly Skin as well, um, giving them some innate missile resistance up to 25%, in addition to, of course, that Silver Shield, which is going to help out with Small Arms Fire by blocking 55% of the uh, fire coming that way. That is just your um, that Sword and Board variant. Now we got the Great Weapon variant, which is going to increase that AP profile to be 80 now with 20 five bonus versus large so these guys are going to be really your big monster slayers on the move um of course you've got tons of other ways to deal with monsters but i'm talking about simply from a mobile standpoint and being able to kind of shoot it and boot it it's going to be these big boys running across the battlefield and getting that heavy damage in melee attack at 38 and 36 melee defense which is a little bit more than the 36 base of your uh, sword and board bros then in the back we have our Bull Centaur renders with dual axes. Now these are just the same thing as your great weapon, but instead you're gonna swap out that damage here because you're still getting that 80 uh, AP, 34 base, but now you're getting that 18 bonus versus infantry to just kind of rend your way through things. With a good 52 charge bonus too, these guys I think are gonna be um, pretty fun. I, I don't know what their actual price point is or what it's gonna cost you in the campaign because remember all these units do have unit caps in the campaign. It's worth noting that. Like the stuff that I'm complaining about with the Iron Breakers, you could kind of throw away out throughout the window by saying, well, the Iron Breakers don't have a unit cap like the Infernal Firesworn do. So keep those things in mind. I more just want the dwarfs to get some love. <laughs> um, but 62 speed, 40 melee attack, so, so a much better melee attack of the three, and then 42 melee defense, which is actually better than um, almost all of them except for the renders who actually have shields. So 42, so these guys are, are quite, quite good. Let's move over to some Hobgoblins. The gingivitis goblins here on their wolves are showing us how they stay. Let's take a look over at it, Bob. Okay, 45 armor with them with some bronze shields action, 26 and 26 melee attack and defense, and then just a nice 28 weapon strength, but nice 92 speed. These guys are going to be vanguard deployment. They're going to be up close and harassing things. That's their role, right? A nice 60 um, goblin long or wide or large unit at tier one. These things are probably going to be very effective in the beginning of the game to really get some good harass going. And I'm really curious to see how these guys are going to play because they also get flaming shots, just like their non-mounted counterparts. Um, both of them do have Vanguard deployment, but these guys have 130 range with Vanguard deployment and fire wheels to moving as well as... Oh god, I thought that was stock. I was like, are you fucking kidding me to get stock? But both of them have cowardly despoilers. So the base weapon damage 
damage is increased by 25% if the unit is attacking a rear or flank. So if you use these guys like you probably should be, right, getting to the rear and flank of stuff in the back line of your enemy, you're going to boost your weapon strength. That's really nice. I really enjoy how these things are going to be used. Um, comparing them across the board here to their spear version, spear version has that melee attack, melee defense, and weapon strength above obviously the archer but just to give you an idea you're 26 and 26 versus the archer variant which is only 18 and 18 melee attack and defense so just wanted to kind of give you an idea of how that differs um, and there is no bonus versus large in this profile for the spears but 21 base with 7 um, ap damage and then these guys have for their actual range attack just to kind of show this off 14 base with 3 ap and again flaming shots that's, that is just super super gooey i'm a huge fan of that also both get their malign authority so now that we've talked about pretty much the entire roster, let's move into some war machines before closing us out with some of the uh, crazy cool big beasts of the Chaos Dwarfs. Here are the machines of war arrayed before us from the Chaos Dwarfs, and they are fun. So let's take a look at them. Um, I don't know how the towing thing works, so we're going to figure that out live. Um, we're going to go through these stats, and then I'm going to press start battle, and we're going to find how that works, because apparently the Iron Demon can tow this Dread Crake Mortar, but I, there's no button here, so we're going to figure it out. We're, we're going to do it live, as they say. Um, but the Iron Demon is our first one to take a look at. I think they're all tier... It looks like they're all tier 3. Oh, yeah, they're all tier 3. So the Iron Demon here has that 200 weapon strength, of course, AP and bonus versus infantry, 140, nice and juicy. It does have that double carronade right there and there. 120 range on that um, front facing with 393 uh, weapon strength. That is very nice. And also you have the suppress mechanic coming out of this thing as well. So this thing is going to be quite fun. 36 melee attack and 20 melee defense. I believe in the previous build we saw from Satan the Black, this was 17. Um, so nice to see that actually up at 20. And it didn't look like 17 nerfed, or um, uh, 17 uh, debuffed. It looked like it was like a raw 17. So nice to see that here with a good 50 charge bonus. Um, of course, 100 armor because it's a machine. But we also have more power which increases acceleration and mass. For those that want to know what the mass of this is, it is 10,001. Um, that increases it by 50%, bringing it up to, what, 15,000? That's, that's wild, with a 25% increase to speed here. So, like to see how that plays itself out. These things are kind of like chariots. The Skull Taker is more of a chariot by comparison, but we'll take a look at that in a second here. We get causes fear, causes terror. It's a siege attacker as to be expected. Fire wheels to moving, which is really sick because this thing is, gone, is on wheels. Um, unbreakable Hellforge. Like I said, Hellforge is just a denotation letting you know that the Demon Smith can reforge this and heal it. Contempt. So if you're wondering what things are going to have contempt in the War Machine section, it's all of them. And then Hellbound. So imbuement, magical attacks, physical resistance plus 20% and perfect vigor as long as it has greater than 25% HP. So the way that this worked in uh tabletop was that these things would actually what they started to break they they would uh lose like their demonic ability kind of the same thing as the kadai which we'll talk about they get demonic instability so we'll see how that kind of plays itself out there with those but that's how hellbound works it's kind of that that similar mechanic but 20 percent physical resistance is quite nice on them into the skull taker we have a different unit now just to kind of compare the two uh the skull taker will have will lose any range capabilities here right and we're dealing with slightly less health i guess that's kind of funky uh, but a very similar damage profile in fact it's exactly the same um, looking at this guy over here 140 60 and 18 for that bonus versus infantry and this thing is again just really meant to plow through things that is its role has wall breaker as well so it can just kind of run right into the walls but everything else is exactly the same i don't know if I would use this over that one, to be honest, but I think this is more of just like, I want to use this as a chariot. I'm going to go throw it through my mill, through the army. Now we have our cannon. The magma cannon is doing some dirty deeds here, done dirt cheap. We have 500 missile strength, 140 AP with some AP explosive action going on here. Could you please stay up there? Thank you. 70 base explosive damage as well, and 260 base uh, missile damage. Also, it has burnt. That's the thing that reduces leadership. I thought that flammable also reduce leadership. I'm just dumb. Does flaming attacks as well as being ap and anti-infantry so it does have the ability to kind of roll over things but melee attack is 16 and 10 you know you're not going to want to put this thing in close combat of course for its actual abilities nothing crazy here 
uh, just Contempt, Hellbound, Siege Attacker, and Hellforge. Stuff that we've seen before, but this is our actual cannon for the dwarves. You can see them on the back, too. Look at, look at the little, little Sight Finder. Ugh, it's adorable. Look at these guys over here, too. Their little coal bucket. Yeah, throw it in there. Now we have our Dre Death Shrieker Rocket, which shoots both flaming and magic attacks. Um, so here is the profile for the Death Shrieker Rocket, which is the fragmentation one. 420 range, um, and it is going to be doing 36, 96, 35, 35 for its base missile all the way through to AP explosive damage coming out of this thing. Um, I don't know what this is supposed to be. I don't know if the damage is added onto this or how it really works, but I'm showing you guys this so that you know it. 36, 96, 35, 30, 55. Okay, so it's the same thing as what I have selected. I didn't know if it was like, oh, okay, hey, this ammo adds onto that missile strength or what have you. I wasn't really sure, so I just wanted to show it off. Profile, though, very similar to our uh, magma cannon. So here's the demolition rocket, which is our, and that swaps over here to a bonus versus large of 500. Is it in this profile? Okay, it is. So, 75 base missile damage, AP 300, bonus versus large 500, base explosive damage 30, AP explosive 90, 420 range, reload skill 12. Is reload skill any different? No. Shot through volley is 1, number of projectiles is 1. So this thing is this thing is is built to kill when it comes to large, scary, spooky things. And then lastly, we have the Dreadquake mortar mortar with a uh, fire belly on top here. Loading cannonballs, loading these cannonballs right there into that bad boy, which is just so fucking sick. So this little guy does the monstrous impact speed and charge speed reduced by 60%. Here's the actual breakdown of its damage profile, 72, 262, 10, and 80 with a reload time of 24 seconds, which is substantial. Of course, it is still a war machine that has all the profile of the other three, but you, you kind of know how that goes from what you've seen so far. Hell for... Ooh... Uh, uh, okay, okay. Ooh, okay. I thought one of these didn't have Hellforged. Okay, so Hellforged, Contempt, Wounds, and Hellbound on all of them. Yeah, I guess they'll have the same problem. I, for some reason, I keep thinking one's missing something, um, but I was wrong. So those are our War Machines for the Chaos Dwarf. Let's now jump into our Kadai and other monstrous fun things. Let's not do that. Let's actually do this first. Start battle. So can I... How do I do that? This can apparently be towed, but I don't see a button. Melee mood, halt, group. I mean, all this looks like it always does. Hmm. I'll have to investigate this, or maybe someone else knows. Like, you know, who would probably know? Is the wisest person known to man? Indie Prime from Milk and Cookies Total War. Or it's turn. I don't know. I'll ask one of them, but I thought that these could tow this. So I'm not seeing that capability. They have the same speed, so I don't even know why you'd want to tow it. Um, I remember that blog saying that they can tow, but... Uh, we'll get down to the bottom of that, but I just wanted to show off that I don't know how you tow it. So that exists some way, shape, or form. But let's move now into the Kadai. It's one thing to see it in a trailer. It's another thing to see it in the actual game. <laughs> it's so sick. Like the glowing runes on its forearm and chest. Like it's, it is such an impressive looking model, man. Like look at this guy. So sick. And this is the unreleased Forge World model that they made for the Kadai Fire or um, Kadai Destroyer, but they never actually released it. So, really, really sick to see this thing kind of being brought into some form of the flesh, right? So, really, really stoked on that, guys. So let's jump into our uh, Fireborn. They're cool, too. You know, they're cool, too. They deserve some love. Let's look at them really quick. So, 60 armor, 50 leadership, 54 speed, 32 melee attack, and 40 melee defense. You're going to be also looking at some flaming and um, magical attacks coming out of them. Weapon strength of uh, 120 with bonus versus infantry of 20. You can see that spread, what it looks like right there. So, how do their abilities work? Siege Attacker, Cause Fear, Hell Forge, so they can be hell, uh, healed by a Demon Smith. Bound Fire Demon. So cannot be routed, but they take damage when their leadership is broken. Bound Fire Demons also have physical resistance, fire resistance, fear, and terror immunity. Bound Fire Demons are also unbreakable whilst most of their hit points are remaining. So, I bel I, I'm assuming that the physical resistance, uh, the physical and fire resistance is one that we see in that resistance column at the bottom. I'm not positive, but 
that is there nonetheless. Demonic Instability and Banish, two things that we expect we've already seen from the Chaos Demons roster. But they get Blazing Body, which is the same thing that the Bale Taurus has for that melee damage reflection, that physical resistance bonus as they spend time in melee combat. And then Burning Bright, so they're unbreakable as long as they are above 50% hit points. A cool, a nice little way to bring that out from um, Tabletop as well, which is pretty cool, pretty spicy. I mean, and they look... Uh, they look great. They look so, so cool. Now they kind of hover over the battlefield if I were to right-click them. Um, but in one of the previous builds that we were able to take a look at, they actually serpented in and out of the battle, like in and out of the terrain. It was really, really, really cool to see how they moved. So they've changed it now to have them just kind of stay above it. But it's nonetheless, they are still awesome. Absolutely love them. So the Destroyer here, taking a look at his stat line, 90 girthy armor, 60 speed and leadership, 52 melee attack, 34 melee defense, as to be expected when you deal with a big bad boy like this, 180 base weapon, and 500 AP coming out of him. No bound abilities, but he does have some abilities. Bound fire demon, blazing body, but he also gets hellish frenzy. Now, I do not know how this differs from frenzy, and we're going to find out here today. So 10% base AP, base weapon and AP damage, charge bonus 10% and melee attack 10, as long as he has more than 75% health. So, I don't think anything else, yeah, siege attacker cause fear and terror. Let's take a look now at just something else that's got frenzy. You know what's funny is, well I know that the regiments renowned do, one of them does, yeah these guys do. So it's like the same but no immune to psychology. 10%, 10%, 10%, 10. And this is... Yeah, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10. So it's the same exact thing, just no immune to psychology. And isn't Frenzy also bound by leadership? Okay, yeah, so this is leadership bound versus Hellish Frenzy, which is health bound. So those are your two big differences. Um, if I'm being honest... Oh, did it have like a beep beep? Oh, that's sick. If I'm being honest, I feel like Hellish Frenzy is kind of a nerfed Frenzy. Um... No immune to psychology, which I guess is not necessarily that important when you're dealing with what you're dealing with. But losing 75% of your health is pretty easy with this large single target like this. So, I mean, you can burst this down with a lot, even just like crap archers. You can try to get a lot of good damage in this thing as soon as you drop below 25%. Now, Hellish Frenzy can probably be reactivated, of course, as soon as you use your Demon Smith to try and rebuild this bad boy. But... Just keep those things in mind when you're taking a look at it. Now let's close our video out here and take a look. Well, we'll close our, our roster section out here and take a look at our big beasts before looking at our regiments of renown. The Lamasu looks like it owns like a law office. Like, like, oh, have you been injured in a car accident? I'm here to help you today. So let's take a look at all three of these guys. We have the Great Taurus as our first one. Now we've seen the stats on all three of these really, but just to kind of take a look at them very quickly. Here's that spread of the base versus AP of 130 versus 320. That melee attack of 46 and 28 on these guys. Um, speed of 60 as well. For the abilities, it's Blazing Body, which we've seen plenty of times now, but just to kind of show it off, a 25% and 10% melee damage reflection and then physical resistance um, also causes fear. And just to kind of put him up into the air so you can see him flying, he's up there looking good, looking healthy. For our Bale Taurus, it is a very similar stat profile. In fact, we're actually going to put that right there. So here's our Bale Taurus. You can see it's... They have more speed, they have more flaming, or the more melee attack, more melee defense, and more weapon strength. That's the kind of big difference there, right? And a little bit, and 10 more armor. So you can see the spread here on what that weapon strength looks like. 140 and 400, uh, 56 melee attack and 40 melee defense coming out of this guy with that being flaming attacks as well. Abilities are all the same. Except now we get Flaming Breath, um, and Blazing Body is the same too. There's no like different versions of Flaming Body, like or Blazing Body. Like he has a better one than the Tar, than the Bale, or uh, I'm sorry, the Great Taurus. No, both are exactly the same. And his miss, his ooh, does that change? Yeah, so he actually has more missile resistance. He has 25 versus the Great Taurus's uh, 35. And I'll send you up to the air. And there he is, looking, looking good with his non bathed in fire bro. Our last boy in the band is the Lamasu. So here are the stat profile for him. It is a 45. Actually, it's pretty interesting. Oh, so they're all tier 2. They're all tier 2. 45 armor on him, 70 leadership, 85 speed, 36 melee attack that is magical with 44 melee defense and 450 weapon strength. Here's that spread as well for you. 270 base with 180 AP. 
Now for his abilities, he does have Bound Enfeebling Foe and Bound Withering, which is really sick. Um, in the uh, tabletop, they were wizards. They were level one wizards. So I had envisioned them possibly getting some sort of bound ability, and it's cool to actually see if they do get a bound ability. Um, nothing we haven't seen before, like when we take a look at the uh, plenty of other single entities in, in, in other versions of the roster, or other rosters in the, on the, in the game, but still sick nonetheless. Sorceress Miasma, though, effect range 20 meters, negates magical weapons within the effect area. I really like that, as like it's not a contact effect, it's some sort of hex that some of these uh, units and characters have, and others don't. And I, re and you can, I think it's a rune that applies that too. There's a lot of ways to just negate magic damage, which I think is a really, really sick mechanic. Let us send this bad boy up to the air as well. We can see him here. So let's quickly kind of look at uh, the Regiments of Renown to close everything out. Here's all of them arrayed before us, and let's dive on in. Now we have seen these guys already, the Blazing Beards of Bazarak, but they look great. Absolutely great. 85 armor? Doesn't the, does the other Chaos Warrior have 85 armor? That doesn't matter. 85 armor with silver shields, 38 melee attack and 54 melee defense with flaming attacks, and a precursor shot that is 38 missile strength. It's basically the same exact one that the uh, uh, the Iron Sworn have. And they get Frenzy. And they also have expert charge defense. So these guys are actually, like, built to move, dude. Like, they, they're, they are great. Flaming attacks, precursor shot, Frenzy. What a great combination on these dudes. With 54 melee defense, they are quite... You know, I've said spicy spicy so many times in this video. I'm just going to say it again. Spicy and spicy. Good lord. Got a new word, Ryan. Now we're on to the Immortals here, which are our Regiment of Renown Infernal Iron Swarm. And it is wild. So 125 armor. They retain the same armor, of course. But now we're looking at 46 melee attack and 50 melee defense. They keep that same both flaming and magical attacks, but now they swap it off for 54 weapon strength that is bonus versus infantry 36 and 18, and they do not get a precursor shot like the other Iron Sworn do. But they have Undying Will, so their Vigor will stay pretty good as long as their hit points are greater than 75%. And Entities cannot die while this ability is active. So that's great. The unit stays at 75%, I'm sorry, the unit stays at full model health at 100 unit at 100 models as long as it is above 75% health. So it allows you to kind of heal things back up and it keeps them immortal until they drop below. Then they'll start to lose models. And that's a big thing because if you can heal a unit from 75% health back to 100% health, then it hasn't lost any models. It hasn't lost any actual effective damage capabilities. So that is a really, really nice ability right there. And they also get expert charge defense, something that the hammers should probably get. I don't know why I would say such a thing. And then their fire resistance and contempt, all this typical kind of stuff, action going on here. And I like that this unit gets undying, this undying will ability as uh, uh, entities cannot die as a passive versus an active, which I sometimes just forget to use because I'm just bad at the game. Our next one here is the Granite Guard, the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbuss. So I actually had thought that this was, from looking at the icon, that these guys were um, uh, Infernal Guard with Blunderbusses. No, they just have Infernal Guard helmets, but they are the Granite Guard uh, with a still AP damage hammer on their back. You can, or is it an axe? Oh, it's a pick. Oh my god, it's disgusting. Um, with 11 and 33 weapon strength on that. Uh, great stat line of 30 and 46 melee attack and defense. Because remember, these are Chaos Dwarfs. These are not Infernal Guard. Maybe that's a bug and it should actually be Infernal Guard because these guys are tier 3. Um, hmm, interesting. Also, too, we're going to look at 5 base and 13 AP damage coming out of them with that suppressed capability at 90 range. Um, but they do have Dig In. Now, this is the same ability that the Infernal Castellian has. No other unit in the roster has. But it's one of the things that I had kind of talked about with the, the dwarfs, that they need some kind of... If they had something like this, it would be really, really cool. This gives them range increase, missile resistance increase, and expert charge defense as long as they're not moving after 25 seconds. So they're digging for 25 seconds, and then they're considered entrenched. Um, and if they move, it's a 25 second cooldown before they can start to dig in again. So a very, very great ability. And they just natively get a charge defense versus large. So quite nice on them with that 100 armor. I, mean, I swear to God, these guys are these guys are Infernal Guard. Like that's a stat line of Infernal Guard, right? Like I'm not, I'm not high on crack cocaine, am I? I mean, who knows nowadays with me? Oh, uh, where are the fire glaives? Oh, fire glaives over here. Yeah, like I feel like that's, I, f I feel like it's just like the same damn thing. It, I mean, I'll, I'll ask, but 
it feels very similar to the fire glaives and way less similar to the uh to the infernal guard but i guess we'll find out in due time so those are our infer our granite guard we also have hashut's dark ravagers which are brutal so these guys are two weapon wielding with glowing eyes look at that look at those eyes uh glowing eyed bull centaur renders and these guys have quite a lot of stats so 50 armor 50 melee attack, 52 melee defense. They have more of both than the standard render with dual axes. And their weapon strength is the same. 34, 80, and 18 when it comes to that spread. But their charge bonus is the same too, but they now have a special ranged weapon. 10 ammo shot of this that is a shield breaker with 100 AP damage coming out of it and 80 range. So they can actually just chuck things down and break apart that shield, giving them a missile block chance minus 24. And of course, it is AP. Now, for their passives, they get Fire Wills to Moving and Revel in Fear. Charge bonus, melee attack, and leadership increased. Effect intensity increased by each enemy unit in range with leadership wavering or uh, lower. And they get Guardian. This thing's got so many abilities locked behind it. So these guys are, again, um, priced to move with a lot of really great abilities attached to them. Guardian and whatnot, you put them with, a, uh, you put them with the Chieftain, and they're going to keep the Chieftain... In good health, right? With that 15% physical resistance affect lords or heroes. So the chieftain who also has guardian can benefit from this. Maybe put Gordos with them and they can have a nice little uh, 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 pack of doom. And last, not lastly, we have Olga's Khan's Wolf Boys. So basically, um, very similar to what you saw with Gordas, but just as a whole entire unit. These guys have Vanguard, Firewheels Moving, and Pelt of Wolfag, uh, which is speed minus 75%, and enemy units are routing or broken within range. So they only get uh, this Hex if those units are routing or broken within range of them, uh, and that's a 50 meter range. They have the Cowardly Despoilers for the increased base weapon damage, as long as they are doing uh flanks or rear attacks their profile is similar to goblin wolf riders so they have 34 and 34 melee attack and defense not the lower one that the archers have but they also do have bows and arrows so they can use it 130 will fire whilst moving with vanguard deployment and that is also going to give them burning on this as well so they've got a great profile a little bit more armor i think the other one's base is 45 so they have 60 and they have that 92 speed as well so this is a great regiment of renown with a lot of really good capabilities attached to it i'm going to be surprised to see what that costs like for multiplayer for our two engines we have the demon's tongue which we've already seen it's swapping off its oh god dude it is swapping off its attack profile of the cannonade with the flamethrowers attached to it right here and this is giving it a ton of damage. A ton of damage. That'll also do burnt. 2.3k and an 80 meter radius too, or a range too. That's pretty good range in this thing. Flaming attacks, of course. Um, and this, the rest of the profile is pretty much the same with a little bit more melee attack, I want to say. I think like two or three. Uh, and that might just be because of its rank more than anything, right? Yeah, melee attack plus nine, defense plus seven. Um, that is very, very awesome. We saw this very briefly in the um, one of the trailers. Firewolf's moving, retains that capability, unbreakable, Hellforge, Contempt, Wounds, and Hellbound. Everything is all the same, but you just have a different style of attack with the flamethrower of, over the uh, the cannonade. And also collision attacks, which have been colliding with enemies when charging. But this isn't a new thing, but they do get the Soul Damnation. I just wanted to show off that they do get access to this. Um, so it, it was just kind of worth kind of pointing out that this is part of their Regiment Renown list with one two three four five six seven this is like a it's like oh it already exists in the game but it's made by them we'll just slap it into their roster so you can see that it is here um but that concludes our regiments of renown let's just kind of take a look at this uh, nice map while i kind of talk about this overall so i'm just going to kind of swoop through this while we kind of close our video out here and honestly the roster is amazing it is absolutely bonkers like it is so sick to see each and every one of these things it feels very overpowered but i'm thinking that the limitations of the fact that hey you know if you're playing in campaign you can't use certain uh units in you know you can't use them gratuitously you can't just simply 
spam infernal iron sworn or, or guard you have to actually do the necessary portions of, oh look at those things uh, you have to you actually have to do the necessary portions of it to get access to more ability to recruit them so there is that little thing about them also they just seem like they're such better versions of the dwarfs that for the millionth time we do need to see an improvement to the dwarf roster now uh, overall i'm really really excited for this dlc i think it's probably really going to bring a lot of life into this game because it's going to spice up the Darklands. It's going to change the way the Darklands play and it's not just going to be so one-dimensional with NPC factions and some fun interesting ones at the bottom portion of it. You're actually going to have a very crazy Darklands with some Chaos Dwarf NPC factions and fun stuff to play with. So very excited on a lot of the content coming our way here with the Chaos Dwarf DLC. As always guys, don't forget to check me out on Twitch where I will be streaming this live right now playing this these uh, uh these dwarfs these chaos dwarfs showing off some battles against the ai and just kind of answering questions from you guys showcasing stuff whatever you kind of want to see and then throughout next week we'll do be doing other things look be on the lookout for my best to worst campaign video where i rank these guys as well as my individual videos where i give you that no spoiler breakdown talking about things from turn one without showing off the rest of the campaign on what it's like i don't want to ruin the story for any of you i just want to give you an idea of hey which character do you want to play when the campaign does launch and lastly you can get that creative assembly link if you want to help support the channel but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today very very excited for the dlc go ahead and let me know in the comment section below how you are feeling about all this are you stoked on the chaos dwarfs are you thinking these chaos dwarfs are way too overpowered are you feeling the campaign mechanics that limit the amount that they that you can recruit them is going to be that balancing factor or the actual cost in multiplayer then most of the chaos dwarf units are two three four hundred points more expensive than the uh their dwarf counterparts so those things can kind of also factor into things but as always thank you so much for watching have a good one and take care